My name is Zeil Kukowska. I'm born uh, 23rd of December 42. And I come here in 1966. Started working for the company up the road. They were called specialty typewriters for about two years. And then I started the business with my partner. And ever since I am in business, you know, I was in the Carlton. I, I didn't move from very far, from 176 to 188. And I stay here and intend to stay to the end of my days. I worked one, uh, one year in Germany. I worked a few months in Austria and here all the time, you know. I learned my trade back in Serbia. And uh, I worked for Olivetti over there. I come here and start working on a typewriter as I've never seen in my life, you know, like, especially these old ones. So I have to figure out how they function and, you know, I learned as you go, you understand? Uh, the electric typewriters at the time just weren't existent when I was learning to try. Then come electric, then electronic, you know, and of course when computer come, the business just went down. So, so it's hardly, you know, being viable. If I didn't have a shop, you know, I would be out of business for at least 20 years plus, you know, like. Uh, now, since I'm doing that practically alone in the whole Australia, uh, I'm becoming busy every day, you know, like people are bringing machines from Perth, from uh, Brisbane, from Tasmania. I even have a customer from Singapore. I don't know if you remember Michael Pate. Uh, he was uh, playing Indians always in American movies. Ma Michael Pate, then uh, Sir Jeff Jeffrey Blaney. He bought a typewriter of me, you know, like uh, uh, Helen Garner. And uh, I like to see people happy, you know, when I fix the typewriter. And as for me, it's also a challenge. You know, as I said, I'm fixing typewriters I've never seen in my life. You know, I have to figure out how they function. And so when I find out, I can fix them, you know. But they're built solidly, you know, like amazingly, you know, some typewriters like Brickensdorf worked without uh, a spring, which normally drags the carriage from left to right, they've made a system which uh, each key pushes after you type a letter to the left. The carrier, very interesting, you know, never seen or something like that. But I did fix on the end. So the customer was very happy. But I have plenty of typewriters, you know, as you can see, I, I have all this, you know, like, I accumulated them over 52 years in business, you know, so. Germans with Olympia, the material they use, it's a superior to any other one. But later on, Japanese come it with such a simple designs and obviously cheap material, but very functional typewriters, you know, like easy to fix, easy to take apart, everything. So, you know, they really done good thing. And they own designed, of course. Olympia had a patent, so did Adla and so forth. But um, but, but so far as the old typewriters, uh, the Americans are, you know, overwhelmingly on the top, you know, like Underwood, Remingtons, you know. They're, they're really tremendous. Each typewriter got his own problem, you know, like uh, sometimes you have a problem with escapement, sometimes with the line spicing, sometimes with the ribbon reverse, you know, that varies, you know, sometimes ribbon lift doesn't lift, you know, like, 
and key sticking, you know. Mainly key sticking, that's the main problem because the dust accumulates in the segment and then the keys stick before they hit the platen, you know, like. So you have to clean it up and oil it and make sure that it doesn't stick. So nowadays all these platens are getting hard, you know, rock hard. And there used to be a company who done the, replaced the rubber, the whole rubber, but they don't do it anymore, so. There used to be two, three pa yellow pages full of typewriter repair shops and normally sell it, you know, so now it's probably only a handful. Well, all the typewriters, when they're working, they're okay. <laughs> but uh, if they're buying the typewriters in an op shop or somewhere, you know, like they have to see that machine moves at least all the keys are there, that no part is missing. As I said, I can't say uh, throw away in the rubbish. As I said, I don't like that particular col colibri, you know, myself, because I think it's badly designed and so forth. But when I fix it, it's functional, working. I give them 12 months warranty as well. I mean, every typewriter, it's like cars. If you ask me, which car would you buy? or which car you would avoid. Uh, there's no direct answer. I said, I don't like your Volkswagen or something, you know. So it's up to you individual, you know, like some, somebody buy a typewriter because of the orange color or green color. You know, they don't buy because it's functionally perfect or something. Some people want to write a letter or write a story or something. Then I will tell them to buy a good solid typewriter, you know. Olympia I just sold before. That is the uh, best ever portable typewriter built. Strongest as well. That's sort of semi-office model. You can use eight hours a day, no worries. And that will outlast any other typewriter. Sometimes people donated to me, like uh, I have, I did have a uh, lady from Geelong. She had donated me three typewriters. As I said, I have one customer from Singapore. They said that they never seen anybody doing such a good job. I mean, I'm here with a lot of typewriters. I, I like doing it, you know, so I'm, I'm of course, I'm surprised. I'm, I thought, well, typewriter business stopped 20 years plus. You know, when the computer came, typewriter's been thrown in the rubbish. Now they try to find them, dig them from the rubbish to bring them <laughs> to me to fix it. <laughs> I enjoy it, of course I enjoy it, especially as I said, I get free hugs. <laughs> well, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a challenge for me, you know, especially these old machines. As I said, I have to figure out how they function first to be able to fix them. So, and when I fix that, it makes me happy. And a customer even happier. <laughs>